Hey there guys, I got a gun video for you today. I know that's a little bit rare sometimes and a lot of these gun guys out there, including myself, don't do as many of those anymore. So much of that has to do with the, I guess, carriers, the distributors of our information, the YouTubes, all those guys out there not being friendly to us anytime we touch, handle, hold a gun or anything like that. And it makes it tough for us because we're always having our accounts in some kind of jeopardy. So we never know if we're going to get dinged, deleted, uh, demonetized, put in jail, it, all that happens. So that's the explanation as to why you don't see quite as many gun-related videos out there. Today I'm talking about the Palmetto State Armory Dagger. Now I've shot plenty of Palmetto State Armory's AR-15s and AK-47s. And of course they're new in the handgun business with this uh, dagger in 9mm and the rock that they have in 5.7. I've got both of those pistols. Have not run the 5.7 yet, but I will very soon. I actually ordered another slide different than the one that they sent me. They sent me a slide with black sights on it. Now, they are metal sights, so automatic upgrade right there from a Glock, but I wanted night sights on here. The slide that I did get on here is from Palmetto State Armory. However, my friends at Strike Industries sent me some of their really cool gear that I also interchanged a little bit. Barrels, uh, nice slides, you name it, they have all kinds of things. Probably the biggest thing that Strike Industries helped me out on was this mag catch. If you notice how much bigger and how much more it protrudes right there, that was important to me because the Palmetto State mag catch was kind of low profile and a little bit narrow. And with my longer thumbs, it made it a little more difficult whenever I was trying to reach around to engage it. If it was too small and stuck in too much, I was having to, more than normal, reposition my hand in order to drop the magazine. By using this Strike Industries mag catch, it made it so much easier for me. It was just a push of my knuckle and it drops that magazine down. The reason for that is I went and did some uh, training over in the Houston area. Thank you, David Griffin, for the ride over and all the guys over there for the good time. It was a great time. Uh, of course, thanks to Mag Shack also, these guys provided me a plethora of magazines to not only run in the dagger, but also to have that I could keep, you know, piled up with tons of magazines over there when we were actually doing the shooting. And that was really nice because I didn't have to reload my magazines not near as much. Uh, again, that's from Mag Shack. Guys, go check them out. I know a lot of times, especially when we had these run, these types of runs on guns, magazines, ammunition. It's so hard to find magazines. And I know a Glock magazine is a pretty common magazine, but nevertheless, sometimes they are still hard to find or you get them marked up in price so much that it's ridiculous. Go check these guys out. Check their website out. Tell them I sent you over there, but thank you to them for providing that to me again so I didn't have to make quite as many reloads. I enjoyed shooting this PSA dagger. I will tell you that probably initially my second magazine, I believe it was, we were doing some static firing and one of the rounds flew up in the air, the very last one. The slide literally locked open, the round flew up, spun around and dropped right back down. So I know the ejection trajectory was wrong on that for some reason, for whatever reason, and it could have been my grip. I could have had the gun canted to the side a little bit or something along that. That's the only malfunction I had. And again, it wasn't a malfunction. The slide actually uh, locked open. It's just that when I looked down, I saw that round, excuse me, that casing still sitting right there in the action. So I was able to just dump that out and slit another magazine in and it rocked and rolled. I had no problems with it. Probably ran that day, and this is a tactical core, so probably ran, if I had to guess, about 600 rounds. I, I could be off, you know, 20, 25, either way. Uh, but it was a great course. The dagger functioned like I wanted it to. Uh, the thing I liked most about it was I enjoy the stippling that it has. It has a lot of stippling, so it gives you grip texture all around the grip in most cases, but it's a mild amount of uh, stippling. So you're going to still get with sweaty hands that lack of slippage, but at the same time, if you're shooting a long day, you get both, right? You get shooting for a long day. If it's too aggressive of a stippling, it cuts into your hand. Shooting for a long day also makes your hand sweat. I like this mild stippling that they have because it allows you to shoot all day, get hot, get sweaty, and still maintain a decent grip on the firearm itself. I also like the little bit of bow that it has on the back. I don't change out back straps anyway. Uh, I, I'm of the old school that you uh, acclimate your body to the pistol 
I'm not that finicky and that picky where I need to have every single gun feel the exact same way in my hand because whether I'm grabbing for a revolver, a Glock, a 1911, they're all going to feel different. One quick point on that mag catch that I'd like to point out is that you're going to find that most of your Glock 19 type holsters out there, even for the Polymer 80 type series, are going to fit this dagger. But there's two things that I want to point out. One is that different little curve that they have on the front of the trigger guard. They do that to allow for a bigger finger, gloved hand or something like that to fit into. Since the Glocks typically either are flat or curved backwards, that inward or that outward curve is now going to not fit some of these kydex type holsters that you might find out there that's another reason why i put the torch on here because that torch takes all that out of it now you're you're buying a holster that's going to fit the pistol with a light on it so that little bit of a bow out on the front of that doesn't come into play i would imagine that you could most likely take a dremel i know that's kind of a dirty word in the uh, gun world you could probably take a dremel and flatten the front of that down a little bit and get that down up to where it's going to fit in some of these aftermarket holsters that you might find but i know people will be making holsters to fit this at some point anyway the second point that i want to mention with that mag catch being um, I guess a little more elevated and stuck out and more pronounced like that. You're also going to find that that's going to run into the edge of some of those Kydex holsters that you have out there who are expecting that Kydex holster to actually cover that mag catch. They're, they're wanting to protect that in the event that you're carrying your firearm concealed. You don't want to lean or lean over or something like that and you accidentally press that button because you're not protecting it with that Kydex holster. So that's one thing you have to keep in mind here. Now, most of these Kydex holsters... You can, you can heat them up a little bit. Uh, I took my pliers, uh, heated, it up, heated the, uh, the, the plastic up a little bit, and just took some pliers and reshaped it. I don't care what it looks like, as long as it's not dragging on my clothes and as long as it still does what I need it to do to protect that mag catch, I'm fine with that. The dagger functioned perfectly. Other than that, I had no problems with it. Um, I, these guys make quality weapons. I was able to tour their facility and was just absolutely blown away with the level of expertise, the professionalism, the attention to detail, and the all-American made process that they have. Um, just a quick point on that. The only thing that is not from America that Palmetto State puts into their firearms is their 416 steel because they find that Germany still makes a higher quality strength of 416 steel. And I think every year they were telling me that the steel manufacturers in the United States come to them and say, hey, look, we think we got what you're looking for this year. And every year they still go back to that German 416 steel. So that's the only thing they have. Anything that you have um, firearm wise from Palmetto State that uses 416 steel, that comes from Germany. Other than that, everything is made in the United States and almost every single piece that you're going to find on your firearm is also made in South Carolina at Palmetto State's one of many facilities. So that was impressive to me. The thing you gain by doing that is you bring everything in house and you minimize the mistakes that you have out there. Because people who are third party companies who are making parts for people, yes, I understand that's their livelihood and they don't want to send out screwed up pro products. In some cases, those products, the negative side of a bad product going out the door, doesn't always come back to you if you're a third party supplier. You know, you, you may tell that upper management, hey, you know, we had 0.6 fail failure of these parts that went, that came from you. That may not never get to that frontline person who's making that, packaging that, or whichever. Whenever all of that is under your roof, you're a lot more likely to get that message to whomever it needs to go to. So that's where I think Palmetto State Armory is gaining a significant advantage over some of the other manufacturers out there is that they touch every single part. They're touching everything, small parts. They're milling all of these things. I lost count of how many CNC machines they had at their facility, at their multiple facilities. Very, very impressive operation. I also like the fact that Whenever I shot this uh, this training session in Houston, I was able to use their ammunition, their AAC ammunition, brand new facility opened up this year in South Carolina, doing an absolutely fabulous job over there. You talk about a professionally run organization. Just, just truly incredible. I'll be putting a video out on that as well. But that's nice too, because now you're taking the ammo out of the whole guessing of troubleshooting. If something goes wrong on a pistol or a rifle or anything like that, now you're wondering, the first question you normally ask is, what ammo were you using? Well, now Palmetto State can have and supply their own ammo, and they're expecting to do this on a very, very large scale. So by them doing that, 
they're going to be able to take that ammunition question out of it. Not totally, because there's going to be some failures at some point. There's always going to be something that slips through somewhere in that, uh, that chain, that process. But I will tell you, if you look at the type of system they have for the ammunition, I don't see that there's going to be a whole lot of failures. I don't see a lot of malfunctions from an ammo standpoint because of the tight grip that they have on the manufacturing portion of that. Again, very, very professional. In all, this dagger functioned great. I love this thing. I fully intend to use this thing as my sidearm once things cool off a little bit down here in Louisiana. Right now, it's still a little warm, so I'm, I'm still carrying a six hour P365. That's typically what I'll carry in the summer when I'm wearing T-shirts, shorts, and things like that. Once I'm able to put jeans on and a little bit you know, more of a wintry type uh, shirt or a fall light shirt where I can hide that, where I have more baggy clothes on, I will be carrying this because this, I again like the corrected grip as opposed to the Glock. The only downside that I had on this entire thing, the only downside is that this being the Glock 19 sized firearm, with my hands being a little on the larger side, if you notice how part of my hand on the bottom down here does uh, hang off the edge of the grip. With that additional space that they have in order to pull the magazines out of there, whenever I was having to make fast reloads, when I would do that, it would kind of pinch on the uh, back of my hand. That was the only downside, if you will. The thing is, that happens to me on every single gun like this. So it's not a palmetto state or a dagger issue. It's, if anything else, it's my issue. Maybe I should be carrying a 17 sized firearm instead of a 19 sized firearm. However, I just happen to like the Glock 19 sized pistol. That's why I'll be carrying this and I carry most of my guns or this sized gun. Just not a big fan of that the larger frame, uh, that's just not, I feel like I have more of an issue printing and trying to conceal that properly and just not a big fan of it. I get a pretty decent round count in the Glock 19 size firearm, so I'm gonna stick with that. So again, it's not a Palmetto State issue, but at, that was the only, if I had to find a negative, everything else was positive, that was the only thing I experienced. So again, guys, if you don't mind, go out to Mag Shack, check these guys out. They were kind enough to send me all of these magazines. And those were very, very helpful. The magazines they sent me, by the way, were Glock brand magazines. And they also sent me Magpul brand magazines. All function flawlessly, of course. So meaning that the dagger, you know, you hear a lot of times when you have malfunctions that there might be magazine related issues. Obviously, both brands of magazines ran fine in the dagger. So you're going to be safe getting either one of them. I use some of the big sticks, a little bit bigger than this also. Uh, 21 and 27 count, I believe is what it was. Um, I even used a 33 count magazine and it functioned flawlessly all the way through the magazine. So that lighter spring tension at the very end of those last rounds didn't affect the feeding of the firearm either. So that was nice. So I feel like you can't go wrong with price point that you're going to find on this PSA dagger. There's so many different variations. So the price is going to vary quite a bit based on threaded barrels, different type of upgrades that you might want to put on there, types of sights that you put on there. So there's not going to be one price point at it, but they're all very competitive if you look at all the things that go into this. And if you look at the automatic upgrades that already exist in here. And again, I will have to say, I spent a week with the personnel from Palmetto State Armory. You talk about some quality people putting these firearms together. You talk about some stand up people. These people love their jobs. They love their company. Palmetto State takes care of them, and they take care of Palmetto State. I'm sorry, I thought this was America. Peace out,